Hi, I'm Bob. Let's find answers to the problems for Chapter Ten: Basic Regression Analysis with Time Series Data. In the textbook Introductory Econometrics of Modern Approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. My answer to the first question of Problem One is disagree. Most time series observations have a serial correlation. Time series data are often positively correlated across time. That is, the correlation between variable in time t and t plus one is positive. I agree with the statement in part two. The first three Gauss-Markov assumptions for time series regression are linear in parameters, no perfect collinearity among explanatory variables, and zero conditional mean. Under these three assumptions, the OLS estimators are unbiased. Remember, the zero conditional mean assumption for time series implies that the error term in each time period t is uncorrelated with all explanatory variables in all time periods. For part three, disagree. Trending variables are often used as dependent variables: GDP, family income. Interest rate and employment rate are trending variables, and we use them as outcome variables in regression analysis. We could include a time trend in the model to obtain a detrending interpretation of the estimates. My answer to part four is agree. Each variable in the annual time series contains the average value over the year. It will not have the seasonality issue. The seasonal patterns occur in many monthly and quarterly time series. Let's do problem two. For the first part, we follow the hint and lack the GDP equation for one time period. Then we substitute for GDP t minus one in the Federal Reserve policy equation and rearrange it. We see that the new composite error term contains mu t minus one, a factor that determines the outcome variable interest rate in time t. So they are correlated. It violates the Sir Gauss Markov assumption for time series, since the error term mu is correlated with the future value of the interest rate. The zero conditional mean assumption does not hold. Let's solve problem three. We can write y star equals alpha zero plus the sum of delta zero, delta one, and delta two. Times z star. For a change in z star, the change in y star equals the sum of delta zero, delta one, and delta two times the change in z star. Because the sum of the three deltas is the long run propensity, we can show that in the equilibrium, the marginal effect of an explanatory variable on the outcome variable is the long run propensity. For the fourth problem, we use the R squared form F statistic. The restricted model is the model where the three event indicators are all set to zero. There were three restrictions. The degree of freedom is one hundred and twenty-four for the unrestricted model. We can read the R squared for the unrestricted and the restricted models. Plug in all the elements, and we obtain the F statistic of one point four three and its p-value of zero point two four. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the three dummy variables are all zero. In other words, the event indicators are jointly insignificant at the ten percent level, or even the twenty percent level. Thank you for doing the problems with me. 
See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.